In this video, we're going to write an electron configuration for several atoms. And once we uh, will write the electron configuration from the orbital diagram. So remember, drawing the orbital diagram, we are going to list the 1s orbital, and then the 2s, then the 2p, and then the 3s, and so forth. We have to remember that s subshell has one orbital, the p subshell has three orbitals, so we will do that for the following two atoms, oxygen and sulfur. And if we look at oxygen, oxygen's element number 8, sulfur is element number 16, so the atomic number 8 for oxygen means there are 8 electrons, and then if we looked at sulfur, we saw the number 16. Sulfur has 16 electrons. So we'll first do the orbital diagram for oxygen and then come back and do an orbital diagram for sulfur. So if we do this first for an oxygen atom, if before we get started, we can see that oxygen is on the second row of the periodic table. So this is N equals 1 in the first row, N equals 2, and for sulfur, N equals 3. So when we look at oxygen, we'll put the 1s orbital, and then the 2s orbital, and then the 2p. So there are three orbitals within that subshell, and oxygen has eight electrons, so we'll just put those in in order, 1, 2, 3, 4. And remember to keep the electrons unpaired within a subshell because electrons repel each other. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we come back and pair that electron up. The electron configuration, I'm going to abbreviate that, is 1s2, 2s2, 2p, Four. Again, the number across the top is the number of electrons, so 2 plus 2 plus 4. The total here is 8 electrons. So the orbital diagram is kind of like the blueprint that shows where the electrons are, and the electron configuration is more like the address. So we'll do the same thing now for sulfur. And I'm going to draw a sulfur atom right below oxygen, and sulfur is on the third row of the periodic table. So this is on the n equals 3 row. So when we're doing the orbital diagram, we'll have to go down to n equals 3. This is the 2s, 2p, and then 3s, and 3p. Here we have 16 electrons on sulfur, so we'll just put them in order there, and then these would stay unpaired, but we're going to end up filling up all those orbitals, so we'll come back, pair those up. This is 10 electrons here, when we have a filled S and P sublevel, and then 11 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So sulfur's outermost electrons, those are the valence electrons, look very similar to oxygens. So if we look at these two pictures, there are two electrons in each of the s orbitals, and then four electrons in the p orbitals. So the similar, they have similar behaviors, or they react similarly, and their valence electron uh, picture is the same, and the electron configuration for sulfur We can do the abbreviated form, since 10 electrons is the same thing as neon. 
we can write this as it's just like neon and then 3s2 3p4 that's the abbreviated form we could also write a full electron configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p4 but again this filled level represents neon so either of those forms would be correct I'm going to do an electron configuration for um, iron next so let's look at an iron atom if we find iron on the periodic table we'll see that it's element number 26 and it's on the fourth row of the periodic table so here's iron and this is N equals 1, 2, 3, 4. So we've got to go all the way down to the 4S orbitals, and we're going to remember to fill the 3B, I mean the 3P subshell, then we'll come down to the 4S, and then we'll go, I said that wrong, we'll fill the 3P, then 4S, and then come back and fill the 3D. So for iron, we'll draw the orbital diagram. Do a 1s, 2s. The p's always occur in threes. 3s, 3p. Once we're on the third level, we get to add the third letter, which is d. And the d orbitals occur in fives. And then we'll put the 4s and the 4p. We're not going to need these, but if we put in 26 electrons, I'm not going to put the arrows on here just to get through a little quicker. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. This filled s and p level is the same number of electrons as argon. So once we fill the 3P, we're not going to fill the 3D until we fill the 4S. So that's an energy uh, concern there. A 4S orbital is really lower in energy than the 3Bs. And so there's 20. Then we do 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and come back and fill this. That would be 26 electrons. And when we're filling electrons within a subshell, we keep the electrons unpaired as long as possible, and then their arrows are going to be pointing in the same direction. So an atom has a lower energy when all the electrons have the same spin. And again, no more than two electrons can go in any orbital. And the order of filling, we start here, and we fill the 2s, then the 2p, and then the 3s, then the 3p, and the 4s. Then we come back and fill the d, and if we had extra electrons, the p, and then the 5s. So on the fourth row of the periodic table, here's where we have to remember that we're going to fill the 4s before the 3d. According to the alpha principle, the electrons will go in the lowest energy orbitals first. And the abbreviated electron configuration for iron, so we'll do the abbreviated form. The electron configuration, I'm going to abbreviate that word, which is just like argon, element number 18, and then 4s2, 3b6. Or what's also acceptable, argon, some textbooks write the 3 first because 3 comes before 4. So either one of these electron configurations would be correct.